We are very lucky here at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs to have uh, Alan Baker's newest contribution to the struggle against anti-Semitism. I think everybody is aware that it is an indisputable fact that anti-Semitism is on the rise, particularly in Europe, but not just in Europe. And um, there is this desire among many organizations, including our own, to document that rise of anti-Semitism, to show charts showing how many more incidents there were in 2014 as compared to 2013. But there's a sense of helplessness. What can you do to stop this? What steps can be taken? And so uh, Alan Baker's the kind of person who doesn't like to sit around going, there's nothing we can do. And as somebody who has drafted international conventions at the United Nations, he decided to uh, take up a challenge he made for himself. And that is uh, propose a draft uh, international convention against anti-Semitism. And he'll explain the whole concept. You might wonder, well, how does that work exactly? What the utility is? And I'm sure that's some of the analysis that uh, Alan will give. But all I can say is having served in the UN, when ideas, conventions, begin to pick up steam and there are more and more references to them by leading political figures, by leading commentators, by parliaments around the world who acknowledge them and support them, eventually you begin to see a change. And hopefully today, is just the first step of a long road that we're going to have to take to make sure that this convention uh, gets adopted and becomes widespread. Uh, so without any more delays, uh, I turn the floor over to Alan Baker, whom I may want to remind you, for many years served as the legal advisor of Israel's foreign ministry before he uh, became ambassador to Canada and now with us at the, as the head director the Institute of Contemporary Affairs at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. George, uh, Alan, please. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Gold. Um, you know, when I look at this um, pamphlet, a meager, slim pamphlet that, that, if you haven't got it, then it's at the back of the room. In, in contrast to the, the huge issue of anti-Semitism, uh, I, I ask myself, how come today, with all the long and bitter history of anti-Semitism and the, the, the tragic results over the years, how come up to today, and including today, nobody's really done anything to turn it into an international crime. How come I have to produce this very thin pamphlet with, that one would assume should be a thick book uh, uh, full of uh, relevant provisions? How come we're at this stage that we acknowledge the fact that whilst everybody's talking about it and, and referring to it, and there are instances all the time of anti-Semitism, especially in, in, in Europe, and this tendency uh, to, 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 to um, confuse anti-Semitism with uh, attempts at, uh, to, to oppose or to be hostile to Israel, how come over the years nobody has ever thought of uh, uh, turning this into an international uh, convention. What I'm going to do uh, for the next half an hour or so is to introduce to you uh, the draft convention that I've drafted, the reasoning behind it, um, the, uh, uh, to go through the basic uh, uh, contents and to explain what the aim is, how, in my opinion, this can be advanced until it becomes a, a fully-fledged international convention criminalizing anti-Semitism. You know, it's, it's, it's an irony that this is an international issue. And all 160 diplomatic representations in Israel were invited to come today to this event. 
not one has come. And in fact, we even received negative answers from several of them that were invited. I think this is indicative of the problem that we have of the denial or the refusal of the international community to acknowledge the fact that anti-Semitism is a, 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 always has been and is and continues to be a very, very serious issue. And I think perhaps one of the, one of the headlines of this meeting should be that not one diplomatic representative who was invited chose to come. Well, look, you can give a long list of, of all the diplomatic missions in Israel, and, and those are the missions that, that haven't turned up, including uh, some of Israel's best friends, and including uh, uh, those states that are, are, are less uh, 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 friendly. But they're all diplomatic uh, uh, missions posted in Israel. But let's not get sidetracked. My own background, why did I do this? And, and uh, Ambassador Gold uh, mentioned in, in, in a few words my, my own background. I'm an international lawyer. I, my, my learning, my, my studies in England and then at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem uh, have been as an international lawyer. And uh, in practical terms, I've been involved both as um, a, a legal, an international law advisor to Israel's uh, uh, Israel Defense Forces and the Ministry of Defense, and then afterwards to um, Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I've been involved in negotiating and drafting international conventions, serious international conventions on counter-terrorism, on law of the sea, on aviation, on aviation terror, on hostage taking, financing terror, terrorist bombings, various weapons, conventional weapons and non-conventional weapons convention, um, protocols to the Geneva Conventions, protocols regarding uh, mines, um, and the various preparatory committees to the um, Rome Conference on the drafting of the International Criminal Court Statute. And I was uh, a, a member of Israel's delegation to the, uh, those conferences and preparatory committees, and I was involved in drafting the Statute of the International Criminal Court. That's in addition to to my work with the foreign ministry as uh, a member of the delegations negotiating with the, uh, the Egyptians, the, the, the Jordanians, the Lebanese, the Syrians, and the Palestinians. So I've got a little bit of experience in negotiating international agreements and international treaties, especially those that create international crimes. The International Law of the Sea Convention determines as an international crime piracy. The United Nations General Assembly adopted a, a, um, a convention criminalizing hostage taking, criminalizing uh, acts of terror against diplomats, and, and all the various other 20 or so international conventions. Now, if all these acts, all these criminal acts, are acknowledged in the international community as criminal acts that can be tried by domestic courts or can or, or the offenders can be extradited and tried in any other country or transferred to international criminal tribunals. Why the hell, and excuse my expression, why the hell isn't anti-Semitism one of these uh, uh, um, uh, international conventions? Why hasn't anti-Semitism been criminalized in the international community? And this is the... Yeah, please, please. Yeah, afterwards, okay. Um, I would say that the opposite is the case. I attended the Durban conference on uh, racism in 2001. And there, and uh, in addition to the preparatory committees, which were far more important than the actual conference, because the preparatory committees drafted the various documentation. And our battle at these conferences was to try and keep the term anti-Semitism in the text of the Declaration, and in the end, we failed. 
The Durban Declaration doesn't mention anti-Semitism. And they even tried to reduce the term Holocaust to a small h. A Holocaust among many Holocausts. So the, the, the challenge that we face, which is indicative by the fact that there are no diplomats here, is it's, you know, they're, they're following a, 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 an obviously accepted pattern of behavior, of downgrading uh, the, the, the phenomenon of anti-Semitism, of ignoring it, or of trying to conceal it. And um, this is the reason that I felt as a, a professional international lawyer with, with the experience that I have in drafting international uh, conventions, what, would be, what is more important than to take the issue of anti-Semitism and try and push it within the international community uh, so that there'll be acknowledgement and recognition and acceptance of the fact that ultimately acts of anti-Semitism leading to or intended to produce violence are international crimes. And so, um, in researching the, 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 the subject, I decided to initiate the idea. And uh, I must say, I was encouraged by uh, various uh, uh, people who, who have expertise in the field. For instance, uh, in, a, in a casual discussion with uh, um, somebody called Yogev Karsenti from the Israeli Ministry of uh, uh, Diaspora Affairs, he asked me, tell me, can't you think of any way something out of the, uh, uh, the, the square, uh, what can be done? You know, we've spent years and years discussing anti-Semitism and, and declarations and one thing or another. Can't you think of anything that would take it one step further? And as, as a result of this sort of challenge, which was a purely uh, incidental challenge, then I came up with the idea of criminalizing anti-Semitism. I sat down and did a lot of research on all the various declarations that have been made, whether within the uh, framework of the United Nations or the, the European Union, uh, OSCE, and um, the, the human rights uh, uh, organizations, uh, various Jewish organizations, various conferences, the uh, Ottawa Protocol, the Berlin Declaration. I, tried to cover every possible uh, uh, reference that has been made throughout history to, uh, uh, to the issue of anti-Semitism, and also statements by various Secretary Generals of the United Nations, including Kofi Annan and Ban Ki-moon, who have specifically come out and condemned anti-Semitism and hinted at the need to, to take the issue uh, uh, one step further to some type of international action, which obviously s fell on dead ears. I drafted this convention, and I'll explain uh, how it's built in a few minutes, but because I don't consider myself, or I don't pretend to be a great expert in the field of anti-Semitism, I'm an in international lawyer. So I approached uh, Professor Dina Porat from Tel Aviv University, I, I approached Manfred Gerstenfeld from uh, our own uh, Jerusalem Center and various other experts in the Hebrew University and various other organizations, uh, the, the Simon Wiesenthal uh, Foundation and others. I asked them simply to, uh, to read through what I've written and suggest changes or amendments or to tell me if I'm bashing my head against a brick wall, which explains why I'm bald. And I got some very useful uh, uh, responses and all their suggestions and amendments I've put in to, the, to the, the text. And on the basis of all this, I decided to, uh, uh, together with uh, uh, Ambassador Gold and, and uh, um, the Director General of the Jerusalem Center, uh, Mrs. Chaya Hershkovitz, we decided to go ahead and turn this into a major a project of the Jerusalem Center. Uh, I've been encouraged and supported by organizations like B'nai B'rith, uh, who've also read uh, the uh, convention, by the Simon Wiesenthal people, by the World Jewish Congress, and by various other organizations uh, 
who agree that this is a very propitious time in light of what's happening throughout the world, but also in light of the, the tragic history of anti-Semitism, that now is the time to, 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 to take action. Now, this is a, a, I deliberately drafted this convention in the accepted UN format of international conventions. And I even used the language used by all the various uh, uh, UN counter-terrorism and other conventions, the UN Convention Against um, 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 Genocide Convention, uh, the various uh, other conventions, I simply took the terminology that they've used and the format of, of an international convention so that it will, be, it will facilitate states, when they come to review it, they will recognize the, 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 the familiar language and the, and the familiar format of a, a, res of a, an, um, a convention that, determine, that defines an international crime, determines that it's a crime, calls upon parties to the convention to criminalize it in their own legislation or, and to uh, try people who are responsible for the crime, try offenders, or extradite them, or transfer them to international tribunals, and then calls upon all states to exchange information and, and uh, educate their own public. And finally, I have recommended establishing a new international organization or international forum very similar to the um, global forum that the, the foreign ministry uh, uh, holds once a year here in Jerusalem, which will begin tomorrow, I, I've suggested that all member states of this convention uh, create a new global international forum to exchange information uh, and to monitor uh, actions against anti-Semitism and actions taken in order to, to deal with it. So there's the... the this convention, basically, it speaks for itself. Uh, it's, it's, I admit, it's a legal document. It's the, the language used is legal language, and it's, it's not easy reading. What I've tried to do is to footnote every, every article in the convention and explain where it came from. What is the original source of that article, which declaration of the EU, OSCE, or UN, or, or which statement by a UN Secretary General, or um, which international uh, human rights convention. Each particular article is footnoted, and there are about uh, 60 odd footnotes here, uh, explaining exactly where every uh, provision came from. Now, there, there are about 45 preambular paragraphs, which is a very long, it's very long for an international convention. But because anti-Semitism has got such a, a long and bitter history, I thought it was vitally important to put in references to the history of anti-Semitism from the, 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 um, uh, the, the, the period of the Inquisition, through the pogroms, through uh, uh, the, the Holocaust, uh, uh, and through the various other uh, uh, periods in which Jews were uh, uh, the subject of, of uh, uh, murder and killing and, and uh, exile and, 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 uh, and everything else. In addition to this historical summary, I also, as I said, uh, listed each declaration, each international declaration, each international convention, the human rights uh, uh, protocols and conventions, um, the, the various EU uh, uh, documents, um, UN uh, uh, conventions, UN resolutions that refer in passing to uh, uh, racism, uh, but of course uh, hardly uh, dare to, to mention the, the, the term anti-Semitism. And funnily enough, what I did find, and I made re may make reference to it, in the preamble are two articles that appear in the non-governmental organization declaration at the Durban conference. Whilst the, the state, the, the formal state declaration at Durban refused to mention the word anti-Semitism, the NGO uh, uh, conference 
acknowledged the fact that anti-Semitism is a bad thing. And they made reference to this. And I, I refer to it in the preamble. And then I move to the substantive uh, provisions of the convention and the members of the foreign ministry who are here, uh, who are probably very familiar with the, 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 um, these type of international conventions, will we, we'll acknowledge that, that this is accepted format. First of all, the, the, the Article 1 uh, de declaring the fact that acts of anti-Semitism are an international crime. Article 2 uh, defining what is an act of anti-Semitism. And here, as a lawyer, I had to be very, very careful because in order to criminalize an act, you have to be able to prove that there was a criminal intent. The lawyers among you will, will realize that if somebody just comes and, and calls me a dirty Jew, that might be an, an act of hate speech or, or offensive, but it's not something that I can take somebody to an international tribunal and accuse them of a crime of anti-Semitism. And so I had to distinguish between the phenomenon of anti-Semitism as a, a phenomenon that, that has developed over the years and still exists, and acts of anti-Semitism which are intended to or result in violence against an individual or a group of, of, of people, in which, which becomes a criminal act. And I tried to find definitions of what is violence, because violence it, it, it can be very wide. And I found in the uh, um, UN um, Genocide Convention uh, uh, a definition which would be very fitting here, either killing or c causing very serious bodily harm. And this appears in, in several other international conventions. And so I, I put this in, and I footnoted it, of course, uh, to, to, to give the reference to anybody who wants to research it. The next article simply lists those various acts of anti-Semitism that if committed and if intended to or causing violence would be determined as an international crime and would be uh, triable by, whether by domestic uh, courts or by international tribunals. Um, when I uh, um, gave this draft to various uh, friends, uh, both uh, colleagues from the foreign ministry and, and various other professionals, the first reaction was, come on, you, you have to be politically correct. As soon as you present this to the international community, then the Arabs will come along and say, well, you know, you can't just say anti-Semitism, you have to say Islamophobia. And therefore, you have to refer to the two in the same breath. And this really annoyed me and upset me. Because this is exactly what happened in Durban. That because the Arabs uh, pushed the, the, the concept of Islamophobia, which is completely different. It's, it's fear of Islam. Phobia is fear. And it's, it's not the same as anti-Semitism. The, the, the states taking part in the negotiations on Durban said, well, we, we, can't, uh, we can't just refer to anti-Semitism. We have to refer to all forms of racism and xenophobia. And that, they, got away, they ran away from, from the need to do this. I have put into this convention Article 5, which says very clearly that in light of the history of anti-Semitism, in light of the roots of anti-Semitism, you know, the, 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 um, uh, the Inquisition uh, took place uh, uh, in, in the 11th, 12th century, long before Islamophobia was, was uh, uh, an issue. Uh, the, the, the pogroms took place long before Islamophobia uh, existed. Uh, the Holocaust took place long before Islamophobia existed. The, the roots of anti-Semitism, the tragic results of anti-Semitism, the whole uh, uh, reasoning behind anti-Semitism and the history of anti-Semitism can't be compared with, linked to, or related to Islamophobia. And I put this into this convention both in the preamble and in the Article 5, the, the, the main operative article, so that nobody, if this ever gets to any international forum in the United Nations or anywhere else to discuss it, no Arab state or any other state will be able to 
attempt to attach Islamophobia to this convention. Now, with all due respect, if Islamophobia is condemnable, then it can be the subject of an international convention. Nobody's denying to the international community and the Arab states and the Islamic states, if they want to do this, go ahead, by all means. But not to link this convention with uh, Islamophobia or with any other form of racism, whether it's against gypsies or against anybody else. It's completely different. It's completely separate. It has its own history, which goes for, for over a thousand years and can't be compared to anything else. Um, everything else, the, all the other provisions of the convention, after the, the initial provisions criminalizing and defining acts of anti-Semitism, are the standard provisions of uh, uh, adapting domestic legislation to the commitments under this convention, uh, undertaking to try people who have carried out offenses or to extradite to other countries or to transfer to, to international tribunals, uh, provisions regarding education of uh, population, provisions regarding uh, um, um, establishing the, this new international organization. Now, what are the aims? And um, a lot of people, including my own kids, said, look, you're naive. You know, nothing will happen to this because n nobody's interested. And you know what? After seeing the fact that no diplomats have arrived here today, I, they may be right. But the aim is, and it's a long, but it's a long way to go. We first of all have to persuade our own. We have to persuade Jewish communities, Jewish leaders, Jewish organizations that this is a cause that has to be taken now. It has to be taken up now. It can't be sidelined uh, as it is year after year. You know, every year we have this global forum to counter anti-Semitism, which takes place in Jerusalem. And tomorrow it's going to be opened by the Prime Minister, and there are members of Parliament from Canada and from Germany and from Britain and from all over. And there's going to be three days of discussions on anti-Semitism over the internet and, and anti-Semitism in Europe and one thing or another. And it's very important and a lot of very important uh, uh, statements will be made and documentation will be made. But at the end of the day, on Thursday evening, everybody will go back home as they do every year and happy that they've made their their statements and happy that they've been in the presence of uh, the Israeli Prime Minister, and that's it until next year. What I want to achieve is that perhaps the outcome of this global forum will be in one way or another some acknowledgement of the fact that here is a practical way of taking things forward that requires action. I've been invited to present this convention to the legal working group, which is one of 12 working groups on Thursday. Uh, the the um, Wiesenthal people thought that this should have been the main issue of the plenary of the whole uh, uh, forum, but uh, the foreign ministry decided to invite me to, to one of these working groups. The idea is to, once we can establish the fact that this is a serious and, and viable project, then it needs to be taken by us, principally, with the support of whoever wants to cooperate and support it to parliaments, to Jewish communities, to foreign ministries, to governments, to try and persuade governments to take up this convention and sponsor it. Because an international convention ultimately is not a convention of Jewish communities. It's a convention of states. States can only uh, uh, sign international conventions. And therefore, ultimately, we have to persuade governments to take this up. And I've already received, purely on the strength of, of a, um, a news release that, we, that I've been working on this thing, uh, uh, a mail from somebody, uh, uh, a leader of the Jewish community of Portugal, who says that he is going to take this up with the Portuguese government so that Portugal will, will be one of the sponsors of this convention if and when we get to that stage. So, I think it can be very, very serious. Now, there are two ways to push this forward. It can either go through uh, at the sponsorship of states, it can go through uh, the UN legal organs, the, the International Law Commission, 
or the sixth legal committee of the UN and be processed as a, a, an international convention and ultimately adopted by the General Assembly and opened for signature. Or if we see that we're not getting anywhere with this, we can initiate a completely independent international conference. You know, the EU have their own international conventions that aren't, e that aren't UN conventions. We can initiate our own international conference, invite states to attend, and these states can then adopt this international convention and sign it. So the, the, there are various ways of pushing this forward, but our first challenge is to, to take this to be accepted by, not just by the Jewish communities, but also by the Christian communities and, and by uh, the, the various uh, secular political organizations within each and every state. And as I said, we hope that international or, uh, Jewish organizations will take this up. And obviously we'll cooperate, the Jerusalem Center will cooperate with any organization that, that decides to, to, to become part of this and to, to, to join us in, in what, what promises to be a very difficult and, and challenging uh, uh, road ahead of us. Thank you very much.